reporting. Another interesting option that um, you know is is being made available to us is that um, uh, uh, by default configuration of your NetBeans project also I will use control uh, control um, plus to increase the font here so you can see better what I do here is that it gives us this uh, this information that you can run your application after building the jar file. Now, if I switch back to my project and compile as I did before, clean and build, this option creates, in, this includes the step to create the jar file, which is the Java archive, which now includes, includes all compiled Java classes, including, of course, our main app. And it may be made runnable through this command. So you can also, if you have produced your jar file, you should be able to run it from anywhere really by simply finding the Java interpreter using the jar uh, uh, option uh, switch uh, on the command line and specifying the path to your jar file. So hopefully this also works, right? So if I, if I use this, press control C, go back to my command line, and now I will essentially redo my command by deleting this and instead specifying this the jar switch and also path to your jar file very convenient so hopefully this too works it does so there are those ways to do things from the command line which can be extremely helpful if you're trying to debug something and you really need to work from the true console file and uh, uh, not using um, you know NetBeans directly uh, yes, question. Uh, what do you think about permanently modifying a path to all these kinds of Java? Oh, yes, of course. You can add uh, pa you know, the path to the Java uh, directory, and that's a pr pretty normal thing to do. In fact, uh, let me find out if this works right away. Uh, I can try to go to my data types, and I can find my build directory, and this is where... Um, so again, the, the, the placement was in dist, data types dist. This is where the jar file was built. So if I uh, double click this, um, uh, I don't know if this is being configured to, to be used like this, but let me try something else. If I just copy and paste this without Java, uh, mm, that doesn't seem to work properly. So, um, uh, but. Yeah, I have. But uh, sometimes the Java installer will do that for you, so you have to check it on your system. I remember installing it last time on my lap one of my laptops. It was installed by default. Uh, uh, I, uh, the path was was the path to Java bin was uh, was uh, uh, configured by default uh, by the installer. So I got that. But that's a good point. Uh, on your home computer, it's pro it probably makes sense to just to add. The whatever paths you you feel like adding to to your uh, path environment variable, of course you know how to do that, right? I assume we get we go to. Um, so it's all right when we submit our homework on how to do it. Good question. This is only for the first homework. Uh, beyond that, I'm okay with you just using NetBeans. Don't, you don't have to add that comment at the end of your program. Just you know, you can forget about it. Yeah, I don't want you to forget about it, but you should know how to do do this. What I'm saying is in the comments, if you just note that we added. Yes, of course. Just add the comment. Right Correct. Correct. Yes. Uh, any other questions about this? Any other uh, uh, concerns? Uh, so anyway, uh, I mean, again, we could probably talk a lot more about the command line. A lot more why I'm jumping to one directory, another directory, but we have other things to talk about. We definitely will come back to, to this discussion at some point in the future, talking a little bit, w perhaps when we have a chance to talk a little bit more about packages. Okay, so I plan to switch our gears now to 
uh, this next presentation, uh, which is, so if we scroll down to the um, outline here, uh, we have our presentation marks, marked as uh, Introduction to Java Programming. We already started on it, and uh, we talked about Java keywords, that Java keywords are not legal to be used as variable names, and some other identifiers were, were proclaimed as illegal identifiers. Uh, and uh, this is simply because the identifier or name of your variable or class has to start with alphabetical character, must not include unexpected punctuation, must not include spaces, and cannot be a keyword. Uh, other possibilities exist, but uh, mainly, you know, uh, we'll stick with uh, conventional variable names. So declaring main method, we talked about this. So the, the class becomes executable. We talked about this. Um, example of an executable class. Uh, conventions for naming the class also. Uh, how to declare a class. We also talked about this, and we have some of this on the record. So finally, how to declare a variable. We started this conversation, and we discovered that there are different data types that are available in our programs. So let's come back to this slide after looking at some of the data types. So the data types uh, represent different values in computer memory. Uh, and um, uh, what's interesting about data types, such as integer, or boolean, or uh, floating point, or double, double precision floating point, that they all store, they're all designed to store particular set of values in memory. They obviously have limitation on how much information they can store. And they're all designed for particular purposes. So uh, for example, if I uh, try to work with some 3D graphics program, I may be using a lot of flo floating point numbers to specify the coordinates of my you know, points or vert vertices uh, in my drawing. Uh, on the other hand, if I have to count something, I will most likely create an integer, which counts uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I could also use negative numbers with, with, with an integer data type. So all data types come with the size in memory, the potential of storing particular values in memory, but also they come with a set of operations. What operations are available on them? For example, with the Boolean type in Java, you cannot do arithmetic. You cannot say integer plus a Boolean variable. There would be a syntax error, right? So first, you have to convert your Boolean number to an integer, and then you're OK to, to do your ar arithmetic. Same thing will still work in C and C++, because in C and C++, a Boolean true is interpreted as uh, integer 1, and Boolean false is interpreted as digital uh, uh, integer 0, OK? So uh, the rules in Java are slightly different with Booleans. And uh, C programmers, when they discover it, they they're look very surprised. I have seen some people who were very surprised that they could, could not do arithmetic in, in Java uh, when the, while they did this all their lives in uh, uh, writing C code. So, all right. So, but um, uh, conceptually, the data types can be subdivided to integral data types, floating point data types, and Boolean data types. Again, in C and C++, of course, Boolean kind of falls into an integral uh, data type category. In Java, it's given the special uh, recognition uh, because that's the way Java was designed. So integral data types are designed to store uh, whole numbers. Uh, they're just prim primitive, primitive numeric data types. And uh, Java also defines very explicitly and very specifically so how much memory does this particular data type um, uh, take in memory to store, say, one character, one byte, one of the short integers, an integer, regular size, size integer, or a long integer? These are all integers. And uh, Java, as you can see, is very specific how much memory it takes to store a character. It tells you two bytes, right? 
and then a byte data type will take just one byte, eight bits altogether. And an integer is four bytes, which is 32 bits, and then long is eight bytes. All right, so that's uh, uh, twice as much, which is 64 bits. So Java is very explicit, explicit about this. This is truly a uh, uh, serious help in, for people who write uh, programs for embedded data systems. So they're not surprised sometimes as C programmers may find out that uh, in C, uh, your program has to determine what the size of the data type is. So your integer in C, for example, you know, could be 64-bit or it could be 32-bit. So there, uh, it's more flexible because C and C++, of course, are designed to be system programming languages, which are um, kind of install themselves when you install the compiler. They're specific to the platform on which you install them. 